of those showdowns took place back in the late 80s. Marshall won 111 110 here on November 30th, 1988. And then a great one, December 29th, 1989 in Mobile with South Alabama prevailing 78-65 on the last second shot. So right out of the gate, well, Kevon Boyles had a great game the other night. Defensively, he's a special player. He attacks the rim. He can knock down threes. And uh, he played good defense right there to start Marshall off with a good little block. Boyles, Connor, Kerfman, and a chili Killen, and Nate Martin are the starters for Marshall. And speaking of Anna Chili Killen coming off another fantastic outing. He grabs it there. Kerpen had a great game. Well, Kerpen had no choice there and throws it right into the hands of Samuel Tube. Down low, off the glass and in by Turbo Jones. An Auburn transfer, Jones, Gator, Ormiston, Howe, and Tube are the starters for South Alabama. And the Jags strike first here on this Saturday afternoon action. One thing to watch here early, Mark, is South Alabama's really pressuring up on the guards of Marshall, making them run their offense from a lot farther out than they're comfortable with. It, you're going to have to, Marshall's going to have to break somebody down off the dribble and sort of get some respect and get the South Alabama to back off a little bit. Thomas Howe, we'll get to him in a moment. He played for ULM last season and had a great game here in Huntington, knocking down the three-pointer Jones. That's his 20th of the season. For and Nate Martin at the line, nine double doubles on the season. 11 games. Second free throw. Try to get Marshall on the board here early. 75.4% free throw shooter, but could not get either of those shots to drop. And South Alabama with the early 5 0 lead. Turbo Jones speeding it through the lane and kicks it out and down low to Howe, who scores it. So he sees it to go. Double overtime game here. ULM knocked off Marshall, and Howe was terrific. 21 points and 15 rebounds against Marshall. That was an excellent job by Turbo Jones. He got into the paint, drew a little bit of help, kicked it to Howe, and Howe knew what to do with it. Well, that's what Marshall needed right there. Jacob Connor gunning in his 21st three-pointer of the season. Talked about him early on. And well, he's just got that big, long, lengthy body, can do so many things. And he's really been shooting it well since conference play started, Mark. He's one of the leaders in three-point percentage since the conference began. He's a guy that just needs to start playing with more confidence and try to be more aggressive. He has a ton of ability. Just like you saw right there at six foot eight, he is able to sort of reject the pick and roll, got by his man, dropped it off to Abina, and Abina slammed it home. Nick Gator had knocked down a shot for South Alabama. And Marshall comes right back. Gator and rolls it in there. Gator with an early five gator on the season 19 three-pointers now he doesn't shoot a ton of them but he shoots them at a high percentage he shoots about 38 percent from three and that's been marshall's sort of weakness this year is giving up three-pointers to other opposing guards kevon boyles misfires here is jones he of course he's moved on from there and he's moved straight up the ranks and he's doing a good job here at south alabama they have they're at eight and eight this year and despite being eight and eight, they're three and four on the road, which is a pretty good road record in college basketball. You know, close to 500, you're doing something right. Herpin misfires on the three-point attempt. South Alabama, a neat history in basketball. They've been to the NCAA tournament several times. Jones looking for another three, can't get it to go, and Jacob Connor snags the rebound. Here's Boyles. Connor whips it down to Boyles, and Boyles is shot. Denied there by Elijah Hormiston. Jags back to work. Here's Howe straight away. Got it. There's Howe showing his versatility. He slammed one home earlier. There he is, sort of stepping out as a pick and pop five, showing the range right there. Fourth three pointer of the season, and a chilly killing on the drive. And so Marshall's got to find a way to slow him down, or this could be a long night. Tenth season at the helm of his beloved alma mater, Dan D'Antoni, 76 years young. The oldest active coach in NCAA 
Division one basketball Obina and a chili killing shot unable to drop through and the Jags right back to work and to a little too strong and Nate Martin will corral the rebound. Martin negotiates and off the glass and in. And that's where Marshall, like a lot of these games, is, that's it. they got to attack the paint. They play guys, three guys, six, eight plus. That's a lot of size for this conference. Uh, South Alabama's starting three guards, six, three and under. So one of those six, three guys are going to have to guard one of Marshall's bigger guys. That possession, Nate Martin had Gator on him and was able to put him in the cup. That's what Marshall's got to do is just attack the black painted area. But then Gator comes right back and delivers the shot. And as you see there, South Alabama's looking to push the pace. They like to get up and down. They're one of the leading scoring teams in the Sun Belt. They do a good job of shooting the three ball. So Marshall's got to get back and make sure they find shooters. Elijah Orbiston looking for his seventh three-pointer of the season. There's a career high of 30 when he was playing at Concordia down to Martin and Martin gets it to drop through Martin averaging 9.3 a game 11 games this season in double figures Gator negotiating and down he goes and into the hands of Howe that possession sort of where Marshall struggles. They they get their bigs switched off on guards as they switch everything. The bigs have to do a better job of keeping the smalls out of the paint. That time Gator was able to get in the paint. Obina sort of was in between help and then his man and they dropped it off to Howell who was able to score. So Marshall's gonna have to try to keep the smalls of South Alabama out of the paint. Howell but, has seven in the game. No, they have a lot of D2 transfers on this team. And a, a lot of that has to do with their coach came, as you mentioned, he came from Pikeville. He came from a smaller block. time. So you've been out on the floor, right? You're experienced. You've sort of seen it all. And the guys that jump up from D2 are, are the better players. They score and the, the better players at the D2 level can fit in at the lower levels of D1. And uh, this South Alabama team's a testament to that. Brian Nutter is into the game for Marshall. Where's number 14? Here's Boyles. And Kevon Boyles off that 20 point performance against Georgia Southern. Averages 14, and he's on the board here in this game. Right back comes Gator. Here's Howe with the shot off the mark. And Nutter, who's always all over the place making plays, gets it and keeps it alive there for Kirpin to chase it down. Now, that was an excellent play by Nutter, and when he's on the floor, he's normally on the floor, Mark. And he's always hustling, making plays. And that's just sort of how basketball happens. Nutter makes a hustle play at one end. Marshall knocks in a three at the other. It's just sort of basketball karma, so to speak, is when you hustle and make a hustle play, something good normally happens on the other end. And there, Obina was able to knock in a three. Obina and a chili killing with his 15th three and coming away with a steal here. And, and a chili killing. Trying for the one-handed jam there. Shoot away if he tried to dunk it from a little too far out. That's one you'd rather have the two points than the potential highlight reel. And he kind of got to right to the side of the rim and offensive foul going to be called here against South Alabama. And if you'll see, his right, it's Nutter again. Jumped in front, got knocked down. And Coach D'Antoni sort of went to him earlier in this game than he had been. And that's because I think he realized, you know, South Alabama was playing with a level of energy that Marshall wasn't matching. You put Ryan Nutter in and suddenly that energy flips and Marshall's the more energetic team. That's sort of what he brings to the team right now as a true freshman. And Chili Killen spinning and getting a piece of that one was. Attacking the paint, you're getting it inside where you think you have an advantage. It got blocked that time, but so what? You're going to take it in there the next time and hopefully score it if you're Marshall. Cam Crawford into the game now. Young man, they really want to get going. And right out of the gate, he knocks down his first shot. No, he's super talented. Coach D'Antoni's super high on Cam. He hasn't played in a few games. Coach D'Antoni's just trying to get him to sort of play Marshall basketball. And when he's playing Marshall basketball and doing that, he's going to get more minutes. And here comes Gator right back and answers and knocks down the shot as South Alabama up 10. 
Martin's going to be with their hair on fire, and they've jumped out to a 26-16 lead. So they've heard a mission accomplished here in the early stretches for South Alabama. Riley was the Southland Coach of the Year in the 2017-18 season when he was guiding the program at Nichols State. Well, here inside the cam, Marshall has two cams on the floor, Cam Kerpen and Cam Crawford. And Martin just about lost it. Here's Nutter, time running down, and South, South Alabama. Alabama got away with the yeah. foul right there. Well, they, and then Marcus Melander, who just checked in, takes it the other way and scores it. One thing Marshall's not doing well here early is they're not getting back in defensive transition, whether it's makes shots, miss shots. South Alabama's been pushing it, and they've been getting really easy buckets on the other end as a result. Well, Nutter fires up the three-pointer and drains it. Up right back the other way comes South Alabama, and Ormiston lays it in. Ormiston's first bucket of the game. Nutter's first three-pointer of the season there, and it was a big one, and nice pass from Martin to Crawford. Crawford has four off the bench. And I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's exactly what Marshall has to do. Pound that black paint, get it inside. Nate was able to get picked up and drop it off to uh, Cam Crawford, who was able to finish it on the other side. From way out, and how about Judah Brown, the St. Mary's transfer. All you got to say about this guy, he scored 16 against Gonzaga. No, he's a great, he's a good player. He's a good shooter to be big. If he gets his feet set, he normally knocks it down. He's shooting a little bit over 35% from three, which is, you know, excellent for somebody his size. He has eight three-pointers on the season, and Kirkman has his first bucket of the game, a three, which gives him 51 minutes, only three fouls. These teams are getting up and down. This is a fun way to play and a good way, you know, for them to officiate, you know, just stay out of the way and let these teams go at it. So Marshall's made some changes. Wyatt Fricks is in, Voyle's in, Connor's in, Obina and Achille Killen, and Crawford, and here's Crawford. Nice pass down low to Fricks, and Fricks will hand it to Connor. And Achille Killen lets it fly and knocks it through. That's a good possession by Marshall. All the guys are sharing the ball, passing, cutting. Watt Fricks was hit on a couple cuts. He was able to sort of kick it out as he's falling out bounds to Obina and knock down the three. Well, great crowd here today. Boisterous and Boyles takes it away. That's one you got to give up if you're Kevon there on the break. Two on one. You, Obina's running with you. He's a big guy. You got to reward the big. Throw it up. Let Obina go dunk it. The Marshall came up empty. South Alabama. Can't put it through, and now Marshall back with the basketball. A strong rebound there by Connor. It was Gator, I believe, who, you know, we talked about the blood that uh, he's getting set to check back in, but he's patched up there. It's a great pass by Cam Crawford. He came off the screen, they switched. Obina got the guard sort of on his hip, kept him behind him. Crawford threw a nice wraparound pass. He's bringing great energy here early, Mark. He hasn't played in a few games. He's sort of showing the coach, D'Antoni, hey, I need to be out here, and he's doing an excellent job so far. The Marshall has trimmed what had been a sizable double-digit deficit down to four. Crowd into it. Marshall has the third largest crowd average in the Sun Belt. Dan D'Antoni wants to be on top, and here is the Chili Killer. What a nice play. Oh. Now he's been a great player, and they love him a lot more right now as he's on a personal 7-0 run to sort of bring Marshall back into it. South Alabama has sort of let the 10-point lead get trimmed to two, and they, it's been because of turnovers. They're still shooting about 65% from the floor. It's just they had five turnovers here in the last five or six minutes, and that's allowed Marshall to get back in this game. Judah Brown missed there, but Jags going to get another opportunity here, and here's Gator. Fighting his way in and back out it comes to Turbo Jones and Jones drains a third three pointer in the game. Turbo Jones came into this game with 19. He's got 22 three pointers now in the season. Ott. No, South Alabama shooting it well, but we mentioned sort of they had five turnovers in the last five or so minutes. A lot of that corresponded to the time Gator went to the bench with the bloody nose. Now that he's back in the game, I look for South Alabama to sort of settle down a little bit and get back in the offensive flow. 
Rubina and the Chili Killen and Gator. Looking at each other and Gator, uh, he was hoping to find Fricks there in the paint. Take one or two more dribbles to the basket. He's 6'8". He's a great scorer. He's averaging about 17 a game. He's got a six, the 6'3 six Gator on him. Take your time. Take one or two more power dribbles. Get inside. Finish a layup. Gator tried to go in, comes back out, and then gets it into the hands of Samuel Tube. And Tube works, and Tube scores. That's a great job there by Tube. He's only about 6'3", but he's, he's a strong build, and he got the bigger guy on him, got inside, got into his body, and was able to finish right there in the paint. And then Tube on the defensive end gets the ball. He'll bring it across the timeline, I believe. On different pages, and he hasn't been able to find him, and that's resulting in two turnovers. And South Alabama's pushed the two-point lead back out to seven. Each team now with two fouls and a chilly killing out of the game. Martin is back in, down low. They get it to Howe, and Howe will put it through. Howe has nine in the game. Came into this showdown averaging 6.6. .6. Back to a nine-point lead, and Martin just about lost it, and in fact, he did. I mentioned how Marshall's run was fueled by South Alabama turnovers. Here's South Alabama's run being fueled by Marshall turnovers. Marshall hasn't got a shot up in the last three possessions and has three straight turnovers. Turbo Jones couldn't get half of them. Mark Klein, Cornelius Jackson, Adam Williams, Justin Caldwell. Dan was an all-stater. Justin Caldwell, who also hails from Coach D'Antoni's hometown of Mullins, as Connor puts it up, he was an all-stater. And Klein, Jackson, and Williams were all players of the year during their time in West Virginia high school basketball. No, a lot of really good players over there on the staff for Marshall. A lot of uh, high school records and West Virginia history on the bench. But uh, one thing that sort of was went on the radar just now was how picked up his second foul for South Alabama. He's been one of their leading scorers. He's finished inside. He's knocked down threes. This should be big for Marshall. With him to the bench, they bring in some of those backups that don't see a whole lot of time. While he's out there, you know, that situation, how about Brown hitting another three-pointer? You guys start trying to get some stops and figure out a way to slow down their three-point attack. South Alabama on the 10-0 run. And here is Crawford. Nice move. And Crawford provides a little something to Marshall from the guard position that the other guys don't really have. He's sort of a, he's a big time athlete. He's sort of long and looking to convert a three point play. And he does nothing but net for Gator, an 82% free throw shooter. Forty six thirty three Kerfman darts to the bucket and floating in the air and dropping it percent free throw shooter. Get a good look there at Kerfman. Nice young man who came in here after starting his career at BMI. Something about those BMI transfers to Marshall ended up, <laughs> they can end up being able to shoot a little bit. I know a, a couple. 48, 36, but boy, Gator just comes right back and answers, doesn't he? No, he reminds you a lot of more if you watch the film. And of course, Moore came in here, had 34. And Gators on pace to score a little bit more than that here today. And what a performance the other night by Georgia Southern's Tyron Moore from the outside. And, well, sometimes you talk about guys, they have to sit, they have to watch, and uh, Crawford is just playing lights out here for Marshall. No, he did that earlier in the year. He sat, uh, I believe, two games in a row, missed the Miami game, then played against Duquesne and had about 20 in that game in his return. Here he sat about three in a row, and he's on pace to do about the same thing here tonight. He has a lot of ability. It's just a kid that's going to have to lock in and figure out sort of how Marshall plays and how to, you know, make Coach D'Antoni happy because when he's out there, he's electric. Tube following the nice defensive play by South Alabama. Lays it in. Tube has six in the game. Here is Kirpin rifling it in. We have a big crowd here today, Mark, and they're seeing, a, they're seeing a great game. This is getting up and down. There's already 92 points scored, and we still have three minutes left in the first half. I'm impressed at you, my man. You, you, you added that up quickly. <laughs> yeah, I had to write it down and do a little math, but we got there. Here he is, Connor. 
And I know we highlighted him in the pregame, but he has to be more aggressive. He's shooting the ball so well from three right now. He has to find a way to get more shots off in the course of this offense because when he shoots it, more likely than not, it's going in. 15 three-pointers in this game. Eight by Marshall, seven for South Alabama. Five-point game as we near the two-minute mark. Tubey into traffic and can't get it to go down. Connor yanks down the missed shot. Jags take it right back as Brown has it. Coach Riley's telling him to slow it down. It's getting a little bit hectic. He he wants him to try to get a good shot. He realizes how important this last two minutes is before halftime. Marshall's knocked down a couple shots, got a little bit of momentum. And he wants to go into the locker room with at least a five-point lead. Richie Riley, assisted by Rodney Crawford, Oren Bailey Jr., and Rylan Conroy. Here's Gator wide open. That was about as wide open and beautiful of a shot you'll see. It just doesn't drop. Good D there by. They're, they've shot themselves in the foot. They've done everything they need to do on offense. But they've started to turn the ball over a little too much, and that gave Marshall some life. And, you know, Marshall's sort of the same way. Marshall shot it well, but they're turning the ball over. Whoever can start taking care of the ball first is going to be the team. Well, it will be South Alabama's basketball. South Alabama coming off an 89-55 loss to James Madison. Gator had 16. Dube had 15. Marshall, of course, earned that hard-fought victory over Georgia Southern, 79-75. Boyles with 20, and a chili killing, and Kirpin each with 19, scooping it up and unable to get it to fall through there. Gator and Marshall will have the basketball as we go under a minute to play here. Now, Jacob Connors did a good job right there. He realized Gator was left-handed, sort of stayed on that left shoulder, didn't let him get to that shot, made him go to a sort of right-hand scoop shot. It came off the glass. He did a good job there. That's how Marshall's bigs have to guard when they get switched on those little guards. There's Boyles. Connor is wide open. Off the mark. Turbo Jones corrals the missed shot. And they can whittle it down here. When you look at Gator. Gator kind of looks over here. Does the way it is dripping wet. I mean, that has been the pace here. What a first half. No, both teams have been getting up and down. This is a big possession here for Marshall. There's a big difference between five and seven and eight point deficit at halftime, so Marshall needs to stop here. Meanwhile, South Alabama looks to add to the lead, and they do as Joe. Could, could become a factor if Marshall can just get a couple stops and sort of get the people into it. That could help them in the second half, bring them some energy. This game featuring two players, one for South Alabama, Turbo Jones, and and a chili killing for Marshall. Both were second team picks in the preseason for all Sunbelt Conference honors. So that can't please Coach D'Antoni. We just talked about halftime how Marshall had nine first half turnovers. You get a stop to start the second half and then you turn it right back over and don't even get a shot up. Turbo Jones down low, couldn't get it to go. Here is Kirpin and his shot. Guns it up, but can't get it to fall through. And that's a good look for Marshall. That little pin down for Cam to sort of flare out to the corner. That's a shot he makes most of the time. He hit four big threes in the second half against Georgia Southern. He's looking to do the same thing, sort of spark the hurt here tonight. Marshall is 110 and 40 under Dan D'Antoni here at the Cam Henderson Center. Jacob Connor now with eight in the game. No, and that's what having a 6'8 guard does for you. Is he can get in the paint. He can finish over the littler guys. Good take there by Gator. May have got away with the travel, but was able to sort of answer back real quick and stem any momentum Marshall might have got by the quick score. Kirpin answers. Kirpin has 11 in the game. Gator coming in, averaging 16 and a half, fourth in the conference, and he's at 16 at the moment. He's far from done. He's sort of looking to match what Tyron Moore did earlier this week against Marshall. Here's how. Set out some there in that first half with two fouls. Nice pass down low. Ormiston gets it to Samuel Tube for the bucket. 
And these, these, these baskets by South Alabama are just too easy if you're Marshall. They've got in the paint. Even the ones that they didn't score, they miss easy shots at the rim. Marshall's got to start offering a little resistance. I know they've shot the ball well from three, but everybody shoots the ball well from two feet away. So Marshall's got to do a little bit better job on the defensive end. Tube twisting, turning, and working his magic there. He's got 10 in the game. Boy, just you, he earned that one. Well, case in point, Mark, you let him get two feet away, it's easy to finish there. Marshall's got to try to keep him on the outside. His first. So coming out will be Thomas Howe. They'll get Judah Brown in there, and Brown did a nice job coming off the bench with two three-pointers in that first half. We've played two and a half minutes here to start the second half. South Alabama's taken five shots. All five shots have been in the paint, and three of them have been made. So Marshall's got to go back to the drawing board to figure out a way to try to slow this team down. Nate Martin could not get it to go down. On the move here is Gator. Gator to Tube. Tube with 12. Marshall sort of missed the bunny on one end, and that's how it happens. You, you miss an opportunity on one end, the other team only takes advantage. South Alabama able to get it out quick and finish in on the break. South Alabama has led from the start here in a turnover by the Thundering Herd. Jaguars go back to work. Ormiston looking for a three. They had a great look at it, just rims out of there. Yvonne Boyles, Obina and the Chili Killen, Nate Martin, Cam Kirpin, and Cam Crawford out there at the moment for the Thundering Herd. Gator darts to the bucket. Gator scores. Gator has 18. And Gator has a nice little old man's game to him. He's strong. He gets in the paint. That's two possessions already this half. He's gotten the paint and was able to finish over Marshall's length. He's an all Northeast Conference pick there at Assumption. And now he blasts his way to the bucket again. Marshall needs to try to find a good shot. They're sort of out of sync right now. Got two or three turnovers already this half. Got a couple shots blocked. On this other end, Mark, if you're Marshall, if you're a Marshall fan, you want them to do something different on defense. You've given up 63 points through a half and four minutes, whether it's double teaming people off the screen or just hedging and getting back. The switching right now is not working. Marshall needs to sort of throw something different at South Alabama to try to get them out of this rhythm that they're in. Crawford, the Indiana State transfer now has 11 in the game, and boy, straight away, Tube delivers. And that's just bad defense. You know, he was in decent position, but if if you're not close enough where they feel pressure and they can rise straight up and knock it down from about 18 feet away, guys at this level are going to make that shot. you got to make guys feel you, and you got to be able to contest. Tube has 14 in the game. And Anna Chili killing, firing up the shot and couldn't get it to go down. And Jaguars go back to work here. This is danger time if you're Marshall. You're sort of out of sync. South Alabama's playing really well. It's a 12-point game. If they push it out much more, this could get away from Marshall. Turbo Jones now with 16 in the game. I think Coach Antonio needs to think about taking a timeout here. And he scored the last 18 points of the game. And I learned during the timeout that uh, you, you had not been bored. No, I wasn't around for that game. I've, I've seen a lot of herd basketball, but not quite that much. We... I like, I like being around you young guys. It makes me feel young. And, and, and speaking of a, a guy that's feeling it tonight, feeling young, how about Gator? No, he's doing an excellent job, but Marshall has to make an adjustment, Mark. Whether it's go zone, do something else, it's obviously not working. You've given up 53 points in the first half, 16 here in the first five minutes. This is, why, this is where Coach D'Antoni should earn his money right here. He has offensively their role, but we got to switch it up on defense a little bit. We got to do something a little bit different. It's time to, you know, we're, it's emergency time because now you're down 18 points and you got 14 minutes to play. And Jones scores there. Jones has 18 in the contest. So you're Dan D'Antoni. You're just saying, hey, we, guys, we got to change. Judah Brown has eight in the basketball game. Jim Brown started his career at St. Mary's. Had a game against Gonzaga of 16. He loves horseback riding and knitting. Now how about that when you're away from uh, 
I wouldn't have guessed that. Those wouldn't have been my first two choices for his hobbies. At knitting, you've really, you really got to concentrate. And uh, maybe brings the focus here to the floor. Kerfman playing hard and crafting a couple there for the Thundering Herd. Well, that's what you want from your leaders on the team is leaders take over in times where they're getting hard. He did just that. He got a bucket. Now maybe Marshall can string together a couple stops and make this a little bit more interesting. They forced the walk there and didn't get called, so that's a tough one. Herbo Jones blasting into the paint. Ormiston will fire, and that one won't go down. And a chilly killing with the bucket and the big step. Too strong off the glass. Right back comes South Alabama. Beautiful feed from Jones into the hands of Tube. And that's sort of how this game's been this whole time. You know, Marshall thought they had a little momentum, got out on a break, missed an easy break up the momentum a little bit. Team's a little bit hectic, out of sorts. Here you see Nate just taking upon himself, trying to drive. Got a bumping call. Marshall's got to do something to sort of flip the energy in this game. Ormiston has two fouls, three on South Alabama here in the second half. Crawford driving, and Crawford, boy, what a beauty by Crawford, who has 13. Jags back to work now, two bay. It might be too late, and there it was. He got a foul call. And Antoni is pleading his case. Too bad at the free throw this afternoon, but had a chance to go cover a football game there this past season. What a nice place. What a beautiful campus. Too bad up and spins it in there. This is going to be a tough game for the staff to sort of look back on. You've got 57 points with 12 minutes to go. You're on pace to score over 80. You think, oh, man, we're in good shape. And then you look at the other team, and they've got 77, and they're on pace to score over 100. Here's Anna Chili killing his shot. Rattles around, and a whistle. So Nate Martin has not happy with, you know, some of the calls that have been made or non-calls more specifically on Marshall's offensive end. Uh, and he got a technical right before. Gator has 21. You can see Coach D'Antoni still not very happy. Not happy with his team. Not happy with the officials. M maybe during the break, you know, you got the technical. That might be a reset for the Marshall the team. Get over there, sort of calm everybody down, say, hey, this is what we got to do. Let's see what they do sort of out of this break and see if they can't find some momentum. Jags with the basketball. Tube, who has been terrific. And from the corner, the shot up and won't go for Marcus Millender, who they love to refer to as Smurf. <laughs> Out of Houston, Texas. I think he's playing into that name. He has blue shoes on, too. So he might be sort of playing into that nickname. Crawford nails his second three-pointer of the game. Crawford's done a nice job today. No, he's came to play. He's got 16 points already here, and that's after not playing for three or four games in a row. So he's, pro he's probably stayed in the gym, put the work in, and now he's getting his opportunity, getting his number called, and he's responded in a big way for Marshall. Nice job there by Tube. They got the miss, had the miss, and then Tube just batted it out there, and another opportunity here for South Alabama. Gator need to work against Connor and Gator's shot won't go and Nate Martin reaches out. That's two stops in a row for Marshall. Carolina, but right now, Marshall trying to get to five and zero oh in league play and number five for the herd. You saw there Cam Crawford, he's trying to do his part. One thing South Alabama has to watch is these last couple of possessions, they've let the shot clock sort of get lower than they have been playing throughout this game. They're starting to sort of try to burn clock you got to keep running offense because they've been so successful and they've scored at such a high clip. You don't want to sort of mess up your rhythm. And here's another possession where, you know, they're just draining the shot clock and they're going to end up with a four shot late. 
the 1967 68 season. And I know you weren't around for that one, not <laughs> uh, the original Jaguars, all freshmen. They finished 10 and 15 under Rex Frederick. And well, they've had some great coaches with Cliff. traditionally a pretty strong program. You mentioned they've been to the NCAA tournament a few times. But here on this end, Marshall, you know, where South Alabama sort of took their foot off the gas, there's Marshall still attacking the basket strong. Nate Martin was able to draw the foul. That's, that would have been a big one for Marshall. But good job by Jacob Connor running the loose ball down. Connor, who leads all scorers here in the game with 21. Since that technical free throw with about 11.50 to go, South Alabama just attacking the rim. Obina's man left him. He started to sprint to the rim. Jacob Connor fouled him. He was unable to finish the uh, dunk, but he's got his chance to finish off the second point right here at the line. And the chili killing. Knocks down both. He has 16 in the game. He's a 64 and a half percent free throw shooter, so he hits his first two of the day. Marshall at the free throw line at the moment. Three of six, and good job there down low. South Alabama's done a good job of attacking the glass and creating extra opportunities. Another retrieve by Howe, and then Tube goes up and has it swatted away there by Nate Martin. Kirpin to Anna Chili kill to the game for Dan D'Antoni's crew. And Marshall's trimmed the 21 point lead down to 13 here, just in a little two and a half minute stretch. They just gotta keep playing. And South Alabama has to sort of be, this is danger time for them as this could get real close real quick. Wyatt Fricks taking the nice feed there and laying it in. Fricks coming in averaging six and a half a game. Had a high of 15 against FIU this season. Two Bay and a loose ball and big time collision. Marshall's basketball and within a technical on top of that. Coach Riley just got a technical foul and you can sort of understand why he's upset. It's, this game has gotten really physical. Refs haven't made, especially since Coach Antoni sort of got technical. He swung the whistle a little bit. He was upset early that they were missing a lot of calls. He gets a technical and then all of a sudden now Coach Riley feels like they're missing some calls on his guys. So Coach Antoni did a good job there. He sort of flipped the momentum of this game with his technical. And uh, Coach Riley's trying to sort of swing the whistle back a little bit with this one right here. Richie Riley joining. We mentioned the great Cliff Ellis, who had been the head coach for many seasons at Coastal Carolina, retired in December, which made Dan D'Antoni the oldest Division I coach in the country. Ellis, Coach Ellis was 78, and he had over 100 wins while guiding the South Alabama program earlier in his early in his career and Ronnie Arrow who was the head coach not once but twice at South Alabama and then coach Richie Riley joining those two gentlemen outstanding coach here for South Alabama not happy at the moment as Kerfin knocks down the two free throws I don't mean to interrupt you Mark but this is a big possession because there's two free throws but now Obina who got fouled on the loose ball has a chance at a one and one, he can make two free throws. And now it could be a four point possession with the clock not moving. And now instead of a nine point game, you're looking, or an 11 point game, it's now a seven point game. And a chilly killing. Oh, is that what you call the shooter's roll? That's a, <laughs> that's a shooter's touch and a friendly bounce all in one. That's a, that's a home court bounce right there. And a chilly killing can't get that one to go down, but out of nowhere comes Crawford. You know, that could work out even better. We've had quite a turn of events here in the Cam Henderson Center. And they have a 21 point. 21's been trimmed to seven, about to be trimmed to five, or about to be trimmed to six. That's a quick 15-0 run in about three plus minutes. So that's a good stretch of basketball there by Marshall. And Mark. I mentioned at halftime, but here comes the crowd. This is as loud as I think I've he heard it in here all year. Yeah, you can definitely say it now. The crowd is going wild. Well, they pride themselves here in one of the best home crowds in all the Sun Belt. South Alabama trying to quiet them, and they will 
for a moment as Judah Brown scores. Brown has 10 in the game. No, South Alabama needed that one. Marshall was on a 15-0 run, and things were getting real shaky. That's a good job by Brown. You mentioned he had a big game against Gonzaga, so he's played in big games in big-time environments. Crawford trying to get it to Fricks. Here come the Jags. Looking to go back up by double figures. Tube, who's had an excellent game here, and wheeled around Fricks. And boy, just could not get it to drop through. And a chilly killing spinning off the glass. Won't drop. Gator speeds down the floor. Out it goes to Brown. That would have been a dagger if you're Marshall. That would have hurt. Now Marshall's got a chance to get this back down to a two-possession game with the score here. Boy, the head coach at the Citadel. And, of course, they are cousins to the late novelist Pat Conroy, who wrote a great... And, of course, Prince of Tides and Great Santini and... Obina's left a couple points here in the last few minutes of the line. It's good to see him knock that one down. Maybe that helps him because the way he attacks the basket, he's got to go up there with confidence, and he's got a lot of, he's probably going to have a lot of opportunities here down the stretch to add to his scoring total. He leads Marshall, and then he comes up on the defensive end as 20 in the game. Marshall trying to shade the deficit and a chilly killing. Had a good look and tapped back up and almost went in from Crawford. Now there with it comes Gator. That was a missed opportunity there for Marshall to trim this lead even more. But Gator is so strong, isn't he, when he has that ball in his hands? He's just got a nice old man's game. He sort of puts his backside on the defender and he goes where he wants and keeps the defender at bay. Here's Kirpin. Gets a screen from Nate Martin. South Alabama shot out to a 5-0 lead in this game. They led by as many as 21. They have led from the start here. It's Kerfman driving, won't go. That's one. I know Cam wanted the foul there. You just got to be a little bit stronger. You can't just throw one up and hope the referee, you know, calls the foul. You guys come to a jump stop, be a little bit stronger, and try to get it. Obviously, he got, it was pretty obvious he got fouled attacking the rim, and Coach Riley was not happy that they almost didn't call that. Coach Riley, a graduate. This would be a great place to be. Three years at Pikeville, Coastal Carolina. EKU for one season is Alma Water, spent time at UAB. Clemson then got that head coaching opportunity at Nichols State. 81 73 our score. Jones has 19 in the game. Take for Connor. Kicks it into the corner, and the shot will not go there for Boyles. Samuel Tube with it, and wide open is Al. Al has 11 in the game. That was a good find there by Jones. Saw the big guy run the floor, rewarded him, and Al got an easy two. Al was off to a quick start here tonight before he picked up his two fouls. He's sort of been quiet since, but... He brings a lot of energy. He's sort of like a, he's, he reminds me a lot of Nate Martin. Big energy guy, good athlete, does a little with things, makes winning plays. Yeah, he and Martin working against each other there, and Howe got the best of Martin there. Martin couldn't uh, make it go down. And we talked about Howe playing for ULM last year in that double overtime game that Keith Richard, the former Marshall assistance team, Came out of there with the victory. He had 21 points, 15 rebounds. Again, he's got 11 and 5 at the moment. Gator looking. Gator spinning. And Gator, he did get the shot off. But boy, then almost takes it away from Anna Chili Killen. This is a big possession here for Marshall. You're starting to run out of time. They've stretched the lead back to 10. You got to start doing your work now if you're going to get it done. Crawford getting set to check back in for the thundering herd. And Anna Chili Killen with his third three-pointer of the contest. He has 23 in the game. No, he's came up big tonight without, sorry, without him. Without him and Cam Crawford, this game would really be out of hand. Here's Howe. 
and taken away by Boyles. Great play by Kevon Boyles there. Just left his man, saw the big, it turned his head. And Marshall is able to pay it off, and now we have a five-point game here late, Mark. They employed it late against Ohio. They employed it late against Duquesne, late against Miami. This has sort of been one of their better their better defenses is once they start picking up full court and pressuring, they tend to turn teams over and uh, make the game a little bit more hectic, which plays into their favor a lot of the times. Turbo Jones blasting his way. And the Chili kill in second, so 16 fouls now on Marshall. Again, South Alabama hit that 10 foul mark. Of them. As you'll see, if I saw it right, he takes that right arm. Oh, no, he doesn't. I was wrong. Obina did foul him, bumped him. That was a good move by Turbo Jones. I need to apologize to the referee. I think that's the first time I've ever been wrong in an argument with the ref, Mark. <laughs> Turbo Jones makes it an 84-77 count. Turbo Jones with 20 in the game. Here's Crawford getting it to go through. That was a good set there by Marshall. They had two guys set in sort of a, a picket fence screen for Camp Kerfman. Had another shooter in the corner. And what that opened up was the whole opposite side of the court for Cam Crawford to drive in there and play one-on-one -on -one as everybody was worried about the backside. Sort of taking over late for South Alabama. He's took it to the rim. He made a nice pass to Howell a minute ago for a dunk. This is his second time at the line in his mini trip. Jones, 25, is his career high against Coastal. It's an 85-79 game. Pass down to Anachilli Killen and into the hands of the Jags. Tube. Nice save by Tube. That was a good look by Cam. Kerfman on the other end is just poor execution. When you have a guy running forward and their guy's running backwards, you just have to make sure you put it up high enough to get it over that first guy because you have to trust your guy's going to be able to get up a little bit higher running forwards than their guy is backpedal. They kept it a two-possession game. You know, once they said you can't let South Alabama push it out anymore this late. Crawford to Kerfman. Kerfman drives and Kerfman lays it off the glass and in. 17 in the game for Cam Kerfman down to a four point basketball game here in Huntington. It's going to be, if Marshall's going to make a run right here, Mark, it's going to be this end of the floor. You can't just exchange buckets with them this late in the game. you got to start getting some stops and cutting into this. I do like this. If you're Marshall, is, they've took all the time. They've just sort of held the ball. Now they're going to be forced to play with their backs against the shot clock. Gator puts up the shot, and Gator, who has been money today. And conversely, that's the perfect possession for South Alabama. You took 30 seconds off the clock, and you got to score. Gator with 23 in the game. The play, he got the big switch on him. Ended up Gator trying to contest late, hit him on the arm. He's got a chance to go to the line for two. Sort of extend about maybe fouling, you know, bringing full court pressure, maybe fouling to try to extend this game. It's a two possession game. If you let him run it down all 30 seconds again and you give up another bucket, that's, that could be the game. Two tough misses there for Cam Crawford. Marshall trails by six. Powell to inbounds. And gets it into Gator. And a takeaway by the Thundering Herd. Here's Kirpin. Let's it fly. Outstanding job by our ESPN Plus crew here today. So Jones now with 22 points. Four of seven at the free throw line. He was four of seven from the three-point line. He has 23 and Gator has 22. Referees don't. And I did not think that, you know, it took that much time before they, really, before they finally stopped it. 33.5. Kerfman looks and gets it into 
And Tilly Killen to Jacob Connor and Connor. So you can't be too mad for your coach Riley. And a Chili Killen with 24 history to go over a thousand for his career. Richie Riley, in an Eastern Kentucky grad, and started his coaching career in Georgetown, Kentucky, and in Pikeville, Obina. And a Chili Killen with both new high of 26. Will it be enough? 89, 83. Something crazy happened. Turbo Jones to the line. He has 23. Gator has 23. Five players in double figures. And Jones can't get it to drop. Here's Crawford. Got to shoot a three. If you Crawford there guarding Samuel Tubank. South Alabama, he's leading the team in free throw shooting, shooting, you know, 83% on the year on a lot of attempts. Season high. Team-wise, 91. And they match that. Now you need a three and the hope you can force the turnover. 91-80. Now if you're Marshall, you just hope to get a couple more points on the board so it looks better on your average later in the season. It'd be tough to find a way to try to pull this one out. Connor to Anna Chili Killen. 